Great, pleasant, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to wherever, whoever, at whatever time that you're getting this message. Greetings to you in a name that is above every other name, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. I am Brian Gonzalez, I'm the pastor of Bride of Jesus Ministry. Uh, welcome to all the members uh, this day. I pray that God has given you all strength. It doesn't matter who you all are. All right, uh, we are praying that God will give everyone strength in this dark time. All right, I want to encourage people, you know, in this hour and in this time to just be strong because it is serious. All right, we are seeing scriptures being unfolded as Jesus Christ did uh, prophesied, he did declared, and uh, we are living Matthew chapter 24. It is being revealed right in front of our eyes. All right? So all we have to do is just hold on and be strong. Whatever God said is in his word, let us believe it. All right? Because we are living in this time. The time that has been predicted, has been prophesied, has been whatever the word of God declared, we are seeing it come to pass in our time. All right, so we are, we, are, we are excited even because, my God Almighty, the rapture could happen. Even though there are some things still to take place. All right, so with that said, I want to go straight to the word of God. All right, which is in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6. I want to continue for the past couple of weeks. I have been encouraging the members of Bride of Jesus Ministry to fight the good fight of faith. Just as in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. All right, and that's the scripture. That's where I'm going to take uh, or start this evening. Or this morning or whatever time of the day. All right. Verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto. Thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. But I want to take and hold on to the first part of First Timothy chapter six, verse twelve: Fight the good fight of faith, brethren. We are living in a real, real, real time where we need to have faith in God. You understand? We need to hold on to not our money. We need to, not to hold on to our possession, whether we have, whether we don't have. Listen, this is the hour for us to hold on to our faith. What is the faith that the Bible is speaking about right here? Is that faith whereby we believe to have trust. That is the faith that the Bible is speaking about right here. And we have to fight the good fight of faith. Let me tell you something one time. This thing that is upon us, this thing that we are facing, this coronavirus, let me tell you something. It is a fight, and it is fighting against uh, whoever it is. WHO, PAHO, listen, it doesn't matter whichever government in the world, whether it be from China, or which is in Asia, to Italy, which is in Europe, or to the Caribbean right here. Listen, we are up against a battle. But only those who know their God shall be strong, according to the, word of the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32, as I use that second part. Though the people who do know their God, they shall be strong. And I'm asking you this, you know, in, in this hour, are you strong? Listen, for you to be strong in this hour, listen, you have to have faith in God. You need to have Jesus Christ in your life. Many people, they have faith in many things. You understand? As we could see with this pandemic, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you have money or if you don't have money. It is coming for you. It is just like death. Death has no respect for anyone. It doesn't matter if you're old, middle-aged, or young. Let me tell you this something in this hour. Death will come. And this coronavirus or COVID-19, listen, it is upon us. But the people who do know their God, they shall be strong. Brethren, World Wide Web. Listen, it doesn't matter who you are. It is upon us. And the whole world is fighting this battle. But only your faith in God. That will cause you to stand. Only your faith in God. Listen, Daniel, he had faith in God. 
And because he had faith in God, listen, that those lions, they could not have done anything unto him. They could not have eaten, eaten him. Because why? He trusted in God. He had a belief in something that is most superior, listen, than what man could do unto him. The, the same thing with the three Hebrew boys. They believed in God Almighty, brethren. They had faith. They said, King, even if you throw us into the fire, we will still serve him. We are not going to bow. Listen, we are not going to bow to Corona. Because why? We are fighting. Why? We are fighting with the faith of God. Faith in Him. This is our time. This is our hour for us to be strong, brethren. We cannot afford to give up right now. I want us to go, you know, even as uh, Timothy, uh, Paul wrote unto Timothy and said, listen, fight the good fight. Listen, to fight a fight. You have to fight a fight, which means that that fight is coming against you, but you have to fight it. And you cannot fight it with your own strength, because why? It doesn't matter if you're a bodybuilder, you could be uh, Mr. Universe, it doesn't matter who you are. You could be uh, good looking, you could be uh, originally made by God, listen, it doesn't matter who you are. You have to fight, but you have to fight with faith. Believe in, listen, in who? In Jesus Christ, in God Almighty. I want us to go across to the book of Mark, or Matthew rather. The book of Matthew chapter 17. I want us here, I want to just speak right here. It so happened that the disciples right here in this, in this chapter, what happened with them? They, wanted, they, they, they were, were, were trying to cast out a demonic spirit. But nothing was happening. The demonic spirit was not coming out. Alright? But what happened is that from around verse 19, then came that of Matthew chapter 17, verse 19, then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I want to read that verse again. I want to read the second part. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, COVID-19 is a mountain in our past, brethren. But Jesus Christ is saying, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, listen, I want to entitle this message, this, uh, you know, in, in this hour, listen, seed faith. Seed faith. And I'm not talking about a seed when you go to church or a Sunday morning or sometime in the week whereby the minister will say, listen, if you have, a, you know, a seed, come on, sow a seed of faith so that you could get your breakthrough. Come on, that's hogwash. That's nonsense. Listen, the Bible says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say unto this mountain, listen, your money, it cannot get rid of your sickness. Hallelujah. Listen, your money it cannot what get you to heaven my god almighty what could get you to heaven is faith in jesus christ oh come on give him praise somebody that is what could save you your faith not your money Many of you, listen, I'm sure many people say, oh, my God Almighty, listen, if I was in church this day, you know, I would have get up and go and sow a seed, sow a seed from a breakthrough. Listen, the seed that you need to sow is the seed of faith. That is what God is calling us to. Only your faith that will save you in this hour. Daniel, he had a high position in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. And even that, listen, that position could not have saved him, but only the faith in God Almighty. And it's only your faith could save you. Your faith in Him. Not your money. So many people, they have this notion of, oh, 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 what happened at all? You know, bring, sow a seed. And if you sow a seed, you could get, a, you could get your breakthrough. You could get your healing. Listen, the Bible did not say that. All right, you want me to speak? Listen, turn your Bible to the book of if, uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 55. Oh my God Almighty. 
Isaiah chapter 55. I want to make sure that you have your Bibles right there. Listen, I want to make sure and show you what, what the Bible says. I want to read from verse 1. Now this is what it says. Ho! A call is made. Ho! Everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye. Buy! And eat. Yea, come. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Come on, you all are hearing that? Come and buy without money. Come and buy milk and honey. Listen, without a price. Listen, that could only come from one. Listen, one person and that's God Almighty. Anything on this earth here, let me tell you something, it's always a trade. Uh, you know, you deal with humans, it's, a, it's, a, it's about like a battering. You know, I give you this for that. Let me tell you something, you don't have to pay God, you know, to protect you. You don't have to pay God to heal you. You don't have to pay God to deliver you. All you have to do, brothers and, brothers and sisters, is have faith in Him. Listen, He said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say unto this mountain to be the are removed and it shall obey you because why is this is he who is fighting the battle for you not you all you have to do is to have faith in him and he will fight your battle for you the god that we serve he never changed he's the same god yesterday today and forever that's the god who we serve this nonsense about coming and sowing a seed so that you would get your breakthrough. Come on, what do you want to say? Uh, you're you're going to look in the Bible and for something to debunk what I'm saying? Listen, you cannot debunk what is truth. If you're trying to debunk this, what you are saying really is that uh, you, you're coming on the same path, uh, more or less like an atheist trying to prove that God is not real. The Bible does not speak about sowing no seed to get no healing. Oh, oh. oh, okay, listen, we are in faith. We are talking about faith right now. Listen, all of us, listen, we have to be home right now. We cannot go nowhere. We cannot see no pastor only via through social media. Maybe Facebook, Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp. Listen, that's the only how you, you could meet us. You understand? So the pastor is not there to lay no hands. The pastor is not there as quote unquote to tell you walk up and sow a seed for your breakthrough. What you're going to do right now? You're going to give up in life? What you're going to do right now? You're going to say, oh, all hell has broken loose. What you're going to do right now? Listen, the God who created the same man, that like this man who is standing in front of you, this is the same God that created you, or rather he formed us from the dust of the ground. And the same God who delivered before, who delivered the Yesterday is the same God that will deliver right now, today, because of your faith. So what are you going to do? Come on. You all, we, we, we think everything is money. We think everything is money. Come on. Go out to the book of Acts chapter 8. Let's go there quickly. Acts chapter 8. We are talking about faith and having faith in God Almighty. Because listen, in this hour, listen, there ain't no money. There ain't no nothing, there ain't no car, there ain't no riches that could do anything for anybody right now. Hallelujah. And I thank God for, listen, he's showing the world, listen, that he is still in control. Hallelujah. Whether it be that, listen, that this thing, that, that, that it got loose, listen, judgment is coming upon this world. Judgment, the judgment of God. Listen, they will do God's work for him. Listen, Satan don't understand. He thinks he's going to win, but God is in control, brethren. My God, he's in control. Acts chapter 8. Oh God, I give you praise. I give you praise. I want to speak about a man called uh, Simon the Sorceress. And what happened with Simon is that uh, he had bewitched the people of Samaria by sorceries. In other words, obia, a magic. Mother Conhocks and all those things. He bewitched. You know there are people who just believe in things like that. Oh yes they are. Many. So this man Simon the sorcerer. Here in when Philip went into Samaria. To preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. When he heard the word of God. The Bible said that he got saved. Oh I give God praise. 
But when they believed Philip preaching, verse 12 of Acts chapter 8, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Verse 13. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. I want us to go switch and go across on to verse 18. And this is what it says. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Imagine that. I want to continue saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Listen, in this, it is turned around this time whereby before this man who was supposed to be a new convert, a new believer in Christ, he wanted to pay for uh, the miracle or the power that he was seeing because listen this kind of power that he was seeing it wasn't no he didn't have to do no simi dimi he didn't have to throw no corn uh no corn grains or uh, uh, upon the uh the table to read anything all he listen he saw the power listen moving through normal men like himself and he wanted to pay for it now listen he wanted to pay for the power now there are preachers who say listen you come and pay me bring something for God to do something oh how things have changed but listen what the world needs today is some Holy Ghost and fire preaching hell fire preaching that's what the world needs today this is what, what this was Peter's response to him but Peter said unto him thy money verse 20 perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. I did not say it. Listen, it's right here in the word of God. The word of God said it plainly and clearly. Though, I, let me read it again. Though, but Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee. Because thou hast thought the gift of God may be purchased with money. Oh, come on. God has given many the gift of healing, working on miracles. Listen, and it's not for no money, brethren. It's not for no money. All you have to do is to have faith in God Almighty, in His Son, Jesus Christ. He said, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved, you shall be delivered. That's in the book of Joel, chapter 2. That's right. Now, many will say, oh, pastor, I remember... When uh, uh, in 2018, when they had the, the earthquake, when we had the earthquake on the 21st of August, listen, many people, Jesus, Jesus, they were calling Jesus when the earth began to shake, when Trinidad and Tobago began to shake. But I thank God that he had mercy on Trinidad and Tobago because in the book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 15, the Bible says that God will have mercy on whom he chooses to have mercy and he will have compassion on whom he chooses to have compassion and God had compassion and he had mercy on Trinidad and Tobago this day and I'm calling on to you today if you have faith in God according to the songwriter faith in God can move a mighty mountain if you have faith in God he's able to save you he's able to deliver you that's the God that we serve we need some preaching. Listen, let people know, listen. Your money cannot buy the gift of God. Even though salvation is free, somebody had to pay for it. That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay for us. So what are you going to do? You're going to have faith in your money? It's of no use right now. What are you going to do? Have faith in a man? You can't connect with, with a man right now. You have to be home. All right, probably you could use a phone. Listen, God have a main line. According to the song, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Go on. Listen, he's on the main line. He don't want you to call no man, but he wants you to call upon him. As I declare earlier, he, listen, if 
if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. That's right, brethren. That's right, those of you who are out there. Listening to me in this hour. Think that, uh, you think that uh, because of your possession or your, your assets or because you're worth something that listen, uh, it could get you by? Listen, it has no respect for anyone. It's coming. It's coming. It's like, uh, oh my God, oh my God, listen, it's all about faith. Who you trust in. Listen, it's only by one name a man can be saved. And that's the name of Jesus. No other name. Only by one name. That's the door to heaven. Jesus is the door. No one else. It doesn't matter what you say. The Bible was here before. It doesn't matter what book you want to bring, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to debunk, whatever theory you want to come with, listen, there is only one name, listen, by which man can be saved under heaven. And that's by the name of Jesus. God was there before. Before the world began, and he's still here, brethren. Everything else came after. Oh my good God Almighty. Let me tell you something. The Bible speaks, listen, if you have, listen, you know, I want to speak, I want to switch. I, I, I'm still on the same faith subject. In the book of Matthew chapter 13, the Bible speaks about Jesus Christ. He was speaking about a sower that went among sowing seeds. And let me tell you something. The seeds that Jesus Christ later on, in, from around verse uh, 19, 20, somewhere around there, verse 21, the seed that he spoke about was the word of God. Listen, in the book of Matthew chapter 13, please, I'm quoting the scripture so that you could go and read it for yourself. So you cannot say that, oh my God, you know, there goes another preacher again. I'm quoting the Bible, you know, and I know what it really means. Listen, go right there and you will see exactly what it really means. And what it is saying, the words was the words of the kingdom of God. And some fell on good ground, some fell on stony ground, and all those things Jesus expressed and exclaimed and he declared. But it's only those, listen, the words of God that fell on good soil. They got reward. Your reward, listen, if you, are, if, you don't, if you cannot understand God's word, call upon his Holy Spirit. He's not no force. He's real. He's a spirit of God. For God is a spirit. And listen, God has a soul. Yes, I will declare it. I will show you just before I leave here. That's right. God is real and he's a spirit. And if you ask him, Lord, give me understanding. He will give you understanding, brethren. Yes, he will. Lord, help me with my unbelief. As I hear your word in this hour, in this moment, Father God. Help me, oh God, Father God. So that I can be delivered from this rot. Let me tell you this one thing. The blood of Jesus uh, cannot save you. Uh, whereby, you know, I, I had a, a meeting uh, with a gentleman uh, yesterday. And he said, Pastor, there are a lot of people who say, you know, we just have to plead the blood of Jesus and plead the blood of Jesus. Let me tell you something. The last time when I checked my Bible in the book of Romans, when I checked my Bible in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says, listen, and I quote from Hebrews, listen, without the, listen, without the remission, without the shedding of blood, sorry, there's no remission of sin. It's also in the book of Matthew chapter 26. There's no forgiveness. As far as I remember the word of God, that the blood of Jesus was for forgiveness, it was, for to, was to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. People say, listen, let us quote, uh, let, let, us, uh, let us say to ourselves, cover, cover, let, plead the blood of Jesus, plead the blood of Jesus, plead the blood of Jesus for what? The blood of Jesus is for saving and for forgiveness of sins. That's what the blood of Jesus is for. We are redeemed by his blood. I remember 
Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and these signs will follow them that believe they will lay hands on the sick they will speak in, uh, in new tongues Jesus sent out his disciples and he said lay hands on the sick he didn't say listen even though he didn't die as yet he didn't say my blood my blood you know my blood Cast out devils in the name of Jesus, not by the blood of Jesus, brethren. Let us get our, doc our doctrine correct. Let us get our doctrine right. So that we will not be misleading people. And people having a hope in, in false things. False doctrines. Read your Bible. A lady, she, she told me the other day, she said, people who have no faith, pastor, look at the COVID-19 come in, people have no faith. How could people have faith when they, they are not reading God's word? How can they have faith? Because the Bible said in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So if you are not reading the word, how can you have faith? Some people listen, they, listen they, they're reading God's word, they still have no faith because why? They have unbelief. That's where you need God to, to come in. Through his spirit. I bring no gloom and doom. I bring hope for us. That's what I bring for us today. Hope. Because in this hour people need hope. People cannot go nowhere right now, listen, and we have to obey the laws of the land. And you need hope, but you need hope in something that is more, most powerful, more powerful than us. More powerful than you, than your husband, your wife, your prime minister, your president. You need hope, and that hope is to have faith in God Almighty, have faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. That's the hope that I bring. God doesn't change people. Listen, you, you out there, you're listening to me. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. And this is the hour that we need him. We need him. Hallelujah. We need him. Hallelujah. This faith that we have, if we have this faith, this belief in God Almighty, the Bible says God is not slack concerning his promises. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, he said this morning, he's looking over his word to perform it. But you have to have belief. You have to have trust. But if you have faith, listen, if you are not in, in, in that place, ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Do you know what tomorrow brings? Do you know what tomorrow holds, brethren? This is not the time for us to give up. And run. Because if you run, where will you go? Where are you going if you're running? Can you go run and go anywhere right now? There are many people who love to run from their problems. How fitting it is right now. We cannot run. Because if one say that they want to run and go to Tobago, run, want to go and go to North America or Canada, or in the European, European uh, countries, you can run. Because it is all over. COVID is all over. Where can you run? Where? None of us is exempt. But if we have Jesus, faith in Jesus Christ. You remember in the, in the old days in the book of Exodus? And if you put the blood on the, on the lentils, when the spirit of death passed, I will pass over your house. That, and that death, spirit of death passing over, it will pass over your house and no one shall be harmed. Let me tell us something. The blood was used so that God will show the people of Israel that he is mighty and he worked through them. What we need to have now is faith in him. This darkness was, that darkness was upon Egypt. Now we have a darkness upon the wall. This darkness was upon one country. Now dark, this darkness is upon all the countries of the world. Where can we run? 
Let me tell you something. The Bible said that when all those things was taking place, there was a light in Goshen where the children of God, where they lived. Things could happen to your neighbor. Things could happen to other people. But because of your faith in God, nothing wouldn't come and befall you. Because why? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. And let me tell you something. Only he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Not anybody who want to live their lives all house, all how. Running from God. One time you're in God. One time you're out. He that dwelleth in the secret place. In other words, if you choose to live with God, you choose to live and do the things what God say. Listen, this is the preaching that people need. This is, this is what you all need to hear, the truth. Because when you hear the truth, that is how you can be delivered. That is how you can be saved. I cannot bring lies to you. I want to come to a close. If you say, you mean, if you say God, mean God. This is serious business. And I want to end with, in the book of uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, thank God. Hebrews chapter 10. Oh my God Almighty. Verse 38, and the Bible reads, Now the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, hallelujah, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. If we go back, God saying, his soul will have no pleasure in that person. It's time for you to come back to God Almighty. That's right. It is time for you to come back. It is time for you to come back. Brethren, you have run and gone. You see, in this hour, this is time. Sir, madam, boy, girl, listen, probably this message might be uh, sent to you or whatever. This is a serious time. You're sure to wake up in the morning. Rise up. It's time to rise up. Out of us. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And verse 1 of chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. Who him? God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently Seek him. Don't give up. Have faith in God Almighty. Don't give up. This is hope. I cannot bring a wishy-washy gospel to you. But I can bring you truth. The Bible says, and you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. That's right. So as I go... I ask, Holy Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord God. It is only by your Spirit, Father God, that could touch and minister to those who are listening, oh God. Lord, as you have commanded me to deliver this word, seed faith, having believed in what you have said, I ask you, Lord God, to bring peace to those who have accepted you. To bring peace, Father God, to your people, Father God. That they will not drop their weapons, which is the word of God, and faith in you, Father God. But they will stand still, Father God, and see your salvation. Though the Red Sea or Corona may be before them, they will only see you. As your word said, I will lift mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. Father, keep them, I ask. Keep us in this hour, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask you, Father God, to touch them, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And as this word go forth, Father God, I ask, Father God, that they wouldn't let the seed, which is your word, fall to the ground. But they will receive it into their hearts that they will not be the same person again, Lord. Lord, thy will be done in their lives in the name of Jesus. Remember that you are the bride of Jesus. And when God is coming for our church, he's coming for our church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. That's in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. First Peter chapter 1 verse 16, he said, Be holy, for I am holy. And in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, he said, Without holiness, you cannot see the face of God. And Pastor Brian Gonzalez, don't give up. Be strong. Until we see later on in the week again, next week, please, God. Regardless of whatever the numbers are, God is on our side. And he will fight for us. But you have to believe that he will fight for you. Seed of faith is to have belief and faith in his word. And what he is and who he is. May God bless you. Much love to every one of you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.